Hi, welcome back to PSOE Math Heuristic Lesson. Now, today we are going to look at a very big lesson on uh, area and parameter. So, area and parameter is actually a very big, uh, it's a big topic. And uh, you need to know a lot of, I would say a lot of methods, but several methods, right? And these methods are very different from what you have learned so far. Like model drawing, assumption, uh, like uh, working backwards, as uh, access and shortage, all these methods won't, won't apply. Uh, you won't be able to use all these methods on area and parameter, which means that you need to know a a different set of skills, right? A different set of skills to uh, to tackle area and parameter problems. So today we are going to look at one particular set of one particular skill. All right, there are there are several others, right? About seven, eight of them. Uh, but today we will just look at one of them, which is a very common common skill that uh, that students will use to solve area and parameter problems. Okay, so let's look at the first uh, the, the example here. And now, uh, and if you read the question, right, you can see the title. Uh, the, the skill that we need to use to apply on this question is to create, right? Create regular shapes and then remove the regular shapes. So what does that mean? Uh, okay, let's read. The figure below is made of a square, A, B, F, G, and there's a rectangle, B, C, D, E. So this entire figure is made of a square and a rectangle. And uh, C, G is a straight line. <clears throat> a, B is equal to 16 cm. B, C is equal to 14 cm, E, F is equal to 4 cm. So find the area of the shader part. All right, so when do we apply methods? We apply methods when, when we are asked to find the shader area of, a, of something that's very irregular. For example, if you look at the shader part, you can see that uh, it is a very irregular shape, All right? What is a regular shape? Regular shapes are squares, rectangles, triangles, and in P6, you also have circles, right? Circles are also regular, semicircles, quadrants. Uh, so these are all regular shapes. Uh, but if you're asked to find a shader part that is like this, which is not regular, then you will have to apply your methods, which is to create. So you create a, re a regular shape. And what kind of regular shape do we create? <clears throat> we always create rectangles, usually. Okay, usually we will create a rectangle or sometimes we may create a square. So in this figure, how do I create a rectangle? I just draw a dotted line to form a big rectangle. So now you can see that I actually have a big rectangle, right? So you can see there's a big rectangle that I have created, right? Including the dotted line, all right, until here. So that is my very big rectangle that I have created. All right, so what's the first step? The first step to solve this problem is to find the area of this gigantic rectangle. And when you create this whole rectangle, you have also created some regular shapes. Like for example, you can see that there is a triangle, a very big triangle that you don't want, all right, which is not shaded. And then there's also another triangle which is not shaded. And that is what you don't want as well. So you don't want all these regular shapes. And then there is a rectangle below, which is unshaded, and you also don't want that. So what do you do with all those regular shapes that you don't want? You remove them, right? So that's why uh, the method, or I call it create, create a regular shape, right? Creates a rectangle, and then take out, remove those regular shapes that you don't want. Okay, so this is the method, right? So now we are going to write out the steps. So how do we write out the steps? Okay, first step is to find the entire area, the area of the whole figure. So you must know the length of the entire rectangle, which is 30 cm. And then what's the breadth? Now the breadth here, there's no number. So you will need to find the unknown side. So how do you find the unknown side? Now there's a square, ABFG. ABFG is a square. So if this is 16, this side is 16, then on this side is also 16 centimeter. Right? So can I find the area of the entire figure? Yes, I can. So let me just write at the bottom. So uh, to find the area of the entire rectangle, length times breadth. Okay, and you get the area of the entire rectangle. Okay, all right. So what's the next step? The next step is to find all the regular shapes that you don't want. So what's the area of the big rectangle, a big triangle that you see? Uh, you can see there's a very big, a very big triangle. So to find the area of this very big triangle, okay, I must know the base. And the base of the triangle is usually horizontal. All right, usually. The triangle usually has a horizontal line and usually we call it the base. So you have half times base times height. And the height is always a vertical line. 
right? For those of you who are in P5, uh, you will understand that to find the area of a triangle, you must be able to find the base, and the base must bring you to the height, right? If the base doesn't lead you to the height, or you cannot find the height, then you have choose the wrong side to be the base. <laughs> so you always look for the base, and the base must bring you to the height. Right, for example, if I if I say this is the base, okay, this this is the base, then the height will have to be right angle to the base. So the height will be 16 cm. So what's the area of the triangle? And you will need to memorize the formula. Half times base, which is 30, and times height, which is 16. All right, so you're going to use your calculator to work out. And uh, you will get how many? You will get the area of the triangle, which is 240 centimeters square. So you got this big area, okay? This gigantic, this giant triangle area. All right. So now we are going to find the area of the smaller triangle, which you can see over here. So how do we find the area of the of the smaller triangle? Now, once again, you must know where's the base, right? The base is always the the base is always the horizontal side, usually the horizontal horizontal side of the triangle. So the base is over here. And what do you see? What what is the what is the base? How long is the base? That will be 14. Alright, 14. Okay, and then what's the height? The height is vertical. It's always right angle to the base. Alright, and how long is the height? Uh, the height will be 16, alright, 16 minus 4. You can see there's a 4 cm here, right? And then your 16 cm is the the breadth of the rectangle, the bigger rectangle. So 16 minus 14, you will get the height, which is 12 cm. Alright, so that's how you look for the numbers. Right? Sometimes the numbers are not given to you, and then you will need to uh, find those numbers. And that's what you learn in primary 4, squares and rectangles. How do you find the unknown sides? Okay, so how do we find this area of triangle? Then half times base times height. So let's write down half times base. So what's the base? The base is 14, so let's write down 14. And what's the height? The height is 12 cm. And then use your calculator, and uh, you will get how many? You will get 84 centimeters square, which is the area of the triangle, the smaller triangle, 84 centimeters square. Okay, and all these are what you don't want. Okay, you don't want all these unshaded parts. All right, finally, we need to find the area of the rectangle, the smaller rectangle. So how do we find the area of this smaller rectangle? Uh, you must know the length and the breadth of the smaller rectangle. So the length is 14, right? You can see 14, and the breadth of the smaller rectangle is 4 cm. So what's the area of the rectangle? Length, 14 times 4, length times breadth, and you will get 56 cm squared. So you got another, right? You got this rectangle area, OK? All right, so what's the next step? The next step is to add all these that you don't want, add all these unshaded parts that you don't want. So you can plus them all together, right? And you will get the total unshaded. So you add them together, 240 plus 84 plus 56, and you will get 380 centimeters square, which is all the regular shapes that you don't want. So finally, what do you do? You take out all those that you don't want. Right, take out all the regular shapes, remove them. So when you remove them, what does it mean? It means that you minus. So you take the entire area, the whole big rectangle, and you cut away all the unshaded parts, and you get what you want, which is the shaded area. So how many is the shaded, or what is the shaded area? The shaded area is 100 centimeters square. Okay? So what's the lesson here? Now the lesson here is very simple. If you are finding a shaded part that is irregular, right? What is irregular? It doesn't look, look like a square. The shaded part doesn't look like a triangle, doesn't look like a rectangle, uh, doesn't look like a circle or semicircle. Then what do you do? Then you create a regular shape, right? Create a rectangle, right? Or create any regular shape. And then after that, what do you do? You zoom in on those shapes that are also regular, like you can see there's a big white triangle and there's a small white triangle and there's a small rectangle. So you look at all these regular shapes that you don't want and you cut them away and that will give you the shader part. Right? So this is how you apply the method. Right? You apply the method when you want to find something, when you want to find the shader part that is not regular. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a very common method that, uh, that most of us will use to solve this problem. Uh, there are also some other methods as well, some other skills. 
So uh, it's a different kind of skills that you will need to learn to tackle area and parameter problems. So let me just quickly run through the skills, which we will not do during this lesson. Uh, but I will just show you what are the available skills that you need to learn uh, to solve the problem. Uh, like the first one, you need to pull out the lines to form a rectangle or a square. So what does that mean? Uh, this 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 skill, right? This skill uh, is only applied when you want to find parameter. Uh, when it's hard to find the parameter, then you will need to pull out the lines to form a rectangle or a square. And then the second one is what is to look for equal parts in identical shapes. So if you see a lot of shapes that are identical, then what do you do? Then you look for equal parts or any sides that look equal to you, and you call them units. So that is another method, right? Another set of skills that you need to learn. Uh, of course, you won't go through all these things, alright? You will learn. You will. You'll be able to uh, learn them during my my weekly lessons, right? During my weekly lessons with my students, uh, I will be going through all these things. Uh, but in this very short lesson, I will just briefly tell you what do we teach in uh, MLGS. Alright, for number three, we also have to learn how to draw a right angle triangle. Uh, because some questions, some of the diagrams, they are quite, uh, they are triangles inside, and uh, it's a little hard to draw, uh, to find the area. So what do we do? Then we learn to draw a right angle triangle to make the diagram a bit more simpler to understand. And then when you have triangles that overlap, okay, or any shapes that overlap, uh, what do we do? We name the parts A, B, C. Like you have regions, all right, regions. So when you have triangles that overlap, you have different parts of the triangle, all right. And uh, what do you call those parts of the triangles? Uh, you call them region A, region B, region C, all right. So you use A, B, C when there is an overlapping. And then number five. Now, uh, and uh, there is an important concept here, when you have identical shapes that overlap, then you have two regions, two regions that will be equal in area. And uh, this is important because it will help to cut down the steps. Right? Once you understand this concept, uh, when two identical shapes overlap, right, then the, the, the parts that don't overlap, they are actually equal in areas. And uh, this concept will help to solve problems and uh, also you, you can solve the problem quite fast if you understand this concept. Alright, finally, or number six, you create and remove regular shapes. That's what we saw just now. Alright, so you create a regular shape and then in the process of creating a regular shape, you have you will have some regular shapes that you don't want. So what do you do with those regular shapes that you don't want? You remove them, you minus them and to get what you want. And then number seven, uh, you look for law of symmetry. So in some pictures, uh, some diagrams are being folded. You will see some folding, right? So maybe a rectangle is being folded at the corner. And, uh, and then what do you do? You look for law of symmetry, all right? So this is one of the skills that you will also need to, to learn how to use. And, uh, and then number eight, which is very common in primary six, right, for circles, you cut and paste to create regular shapes. Uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, the diagram that's given to you could be something irregular, something that's unrecognizable. Uh, but you cut part of the diagram, cut out some of the some of the shapes inside the diagram and paste it on other places to form a more recognizable shape, right? To form a more regular shape. So the method here is called cut and paste. And this method is very common in uh, also very common in P6. When you do circles, uh, you will need to remember this method, right? Okay, and then number nine. Okay, number nine. Uh, you cut away, cut away uh, something you don't want, and you throw it away, and then you join. You cut, throw, and join to create regular shapes. So uh, this is a very simple method, and it's a very small method also, not a very hard method to learn. Uh, so number nine is a very uh, is a small method. It's a very it's a very simple skill to understand. So overall, there are about nine. Okay, about nine nine skills or nine lessons. In, in, uh, in finding area and parameter. So if you understand all the nine, nine skills, the nine lessons here, uh, then there is a high chance that most likely you will do quite well for area and parameter problems. All right, so we actually come to the uh, so we come to the end of our heuristic lesson, and uh, so uh, area and parameter is a very big, right? It's a big lesson. It's a big topic. Uh, so the the sets of skills that you need to use to solve this area and parameter are totally different. Uh, you don't look at, you don't refer, or you don't, uh, you don't think about model drawing. You you don't you don't think about grouping. You don't think about assumption. But you 
think about all those lessons which I, all those sets of skills that I told you just now. Uh, those are the skills that you will need to use to apply on these uh, area and parameter problems. Okay, so stay tuned to the next heuristic lesson and uh, uh, we are coming to the end of the heuristic lesson quite soon. Uh, so with that, we hope that uh, at the end of all these lessons, you are aware of all the available tools that are out there that you can use to solve the harder problems. All right, so stay tuned to the next lesson.